Anh ấy I think it says, yeah, it says we're live. Okay. Okay. Oh. Should be live. Hi, welcome to Live with Leah. Today I have a special guest, Simon. <laughs> hey, friends, it's Simon Hurley. Want to tag me in? You, you want to tag me in? Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna do the foiling with Simon. Okay. Hey go. everyone! I can read everyone's comments <laughs> too. Leah, you've done so awesome. Say bye. Bye. Bye, Leah. <laughs> All right. Wow. We have everybody jumping on. Hi, everyone. Hey, hey, guys. I'm sure you all recognize this crafter, Simon Hurley. I'm so excited. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Thank you. Of course. This is going to be so much fun. I'm excited to sit down and foil and chat and stamp with all of you guys. <laughs> So do we want to tell them um, what we did today and what they should be looking out for from you? For sure, yes. We did a video today. We filmed a whole video all about learning how to foil, all the basics of it, and different methods of application. And of course, I came to Nancy for this video because she is the foiling expert. And so we're so excited. Um, the video is going to be going up tomorrow on my YouTube channel, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. And tonight we're gonna hang out and foil, maybe ink a few cards and uh, yeah, have some fun together. Sounds like fun. All right, so we're gonna turn our cameras down to the desk so we can get right into it, you guys. All right, hey everyone. <laughs> All right, so Simon and I did some basic foiling earlier with uh, what we've been doing all week with just you know, taking some toner sheets and foiling them. We did some um, deco foil, foiling, things like that. I do have, Simon, do you have any extra of the um, deco foil panels? Um, any go. of the toner sheets? Uh, the ones we did with the, I'm sorry, the paste. Oh yes, I do, yep. So here were some of the things me and Nancy did in my video and you can be on the lookout for that tomorrow. And now we're just gonna do some, some other foiling. So yeah, we, we prepped some panels last night when I messaged her, uh, very late too. <laughs> and um, we did them with the Deco um, Foil Transfer Gel Duo. And we're gonna kind of share foiling with these and then I'll finish off some of the backgrounds with inks too. And we'll kind of do that in a little bit. Sounds good. So I wanted to show you guys um, kind of a messier, distressed kind of look in foiling. Um, not everybody is into clean, classic look. So I was going to show you guys a quick way to do some shabby chic foiling, what I like to call it. Let's do it. This one's going to involve alcohol inks. Do you have any of that ready, Simon? Yupo paper yes. alcohol inks? Yes, let me grab them out quick. All right, I'm going to put gloves on while Ryan's grabbing some of his, I mean, Simon is grabbing some of his things. We'll do the live with Ryan next weekend. We have a special special weekend plan next weekend for you guys with Ryan, Tracy, and I. Okay. You know, I haven't worked with alcoholics in a, in a while, so this will be fun. This is going to be so fun. Now remember some of those scraps of foil that we didn't use earlier, like the leftover pieces? Yes. Grab one that's not so pretty. Okay. And you're just gonna want one piece of Yupo paper and then regular alcohol inks and maybe some, bl some blending solution, but you don't need, um, you know, you don't necessarily need any mixatives or pearls or anything like that. Awesome. Okay, so here we have the Yupo piece. I grabbed some alcohol inks. Let me grab some colors out. This color 
is my fave. It's called Dijon. <laughs> so Dijon. I'll grab some blues and teals. It's going that way too. Great minds think alike. Right? I love these blue colors. Hello, Chow. Hi, Jean. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Candace. Hi, everybody that's jumping on. Hello, Lee, all the way out in the UK. Hey, everyone. This is so much fun to be on your channel because I come on your lives every once in a while, and now it's fun to be with everyone live. Well, we are happy to have you. So just throw down some blending solutions, some inks until you have your panel the way you like it. For those of you at home, if you want to play along, go ahead. Use what you have either, you know, we have the Ranger alcohol inks, we have Bria Reese alcohol inks, we have uh, Marabou alcohol inks, um, anything that you already have in your stash will work. You just want to make sure you are on some Yupo paper and I've put down some lending solution. And I just use, I should have told you guys the color before I put it away. I think it's Aquamarine and Laguna for my colors. And I'm going to use Dandelion Laguna. So we're on the same page here. Um, uh, Dijon and Glacier. So these are some fun colors. I always love how blues and greens look together. Yes. I'm going to add a sprinkle of purple for my friend Tracy. He loves the teal and purple combo. So we'll add a sprinkle of purple. We got, we got a, lot, a lot of ink on the surface here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> and I actually think that the more ink you have is really good because then it kind of forms these areas where the foil sticks to a little bit better. But if you, all, if you want to, you can pull off some of those areas. Yes, it gives it kind of this organic marbled look. And of course, you know, I'm sure you have a, a blower tool or something similar. Oh yes, I need to get that out. That's just going to help move and blend everything nicely. Yep. Oh, these look so fun already. My, uh, my green really took over that background. I had a little yellow back in. And anywhere you have like really heavy pools of ink where it's just really thick, kind of just maybe put a little drop of blending solution on there and kind of thin it out. You don't want it too thick in any spot. Okay, I'll spread it out here with this blender. I don't know where my blending solution went. <laughs> <laughs> and then as it starts to dry, you can tell obviously from looking at it, what's wet and what's dry. And what we wanna do is right before it's completely dry, we're going to take that scrap foil and we're going to um, stick it to those kind of um, streams of ink where it's pulled up and it will stick to it. So like these areas, I think, will really stick to it nicely. Ooh, I'm excited. So this is one you kind of have to be right on top of because if you wait too long and the ink's dry, you really can't go back in and get a second chance at it. So once you have it to where you think you like it, and they start to dry, you just take your foil and you just kind of stick it down, burnish it, and then real quick, lift it back up and it will Ooh. stick to those little pools. I love it. Oh, this technique is so fun. Cause yeah, the, the really areas where it got kind of more solid with the more, um, color there, it kind of sticks to really nicely because there's, it kind of leaves a sticky residue if you have too much. Yes. Color. Yes. So if you get too much ink pulling up, that means maybe we should have waited a little longer for it to dry. And if you don't see anything sticking, maybe we waited too long to dry, but for the most part, there's always like a little river of ink that's kind of sticky and you can just place your foil down. And this is a great use for scraps and get it to stick. And you can see on my little panel here where there are tiny little flecks of that foil. That is cool, Simon. I love it. I love how it turns out. And yeah, you got smaller flecks. If you do less ink, if you do more ink, you'll get more foil. Um, but like Nancy said, you kind of have to be right on top of it so that you can get it, you know, while it's kind of in the midst of drying, so that sticky phase. 
Right. Oh, I just love these backgrounds with the foil. So that's one I think a lot of people, you know, with alcohol inks, we always get this kind of organic look and you just have that little bling and it gives it kind of this marble look, the little veins of marble or the foil. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think it looks super cool. All right. So that's all we have for alcohol inks. Just kind of move those things off the desk. Right. All right. Do we want to do some foiling and ink blending? Sure. Let's do it. All right. So for this one, it's pretty easy. You're going to foil like you normally would. So let me find some. I grabbed some toner sheets here that I thought would look good with some colors, and I grabbed some foil. And what was the number one thing you think you remembered today to learn, Simon? Dusty, dusty. <laughs> <laughs> dusty, dusty. So I have this beautiful butterfly foil panel. This is from the brand new Crafty Critta Creations. Crafty Critta is out of Australia and just launched a whole line of foil art. That's so awesome. And you want and a I'm dusty, gonna do, dusty? I'm going to do one that I did with the duo gel. All and right. this I did with a Simon Hurley Create stencil. This is the scene maker and then all ink blend with the rest of the scene, but it just gives the sun a more spotlighted effect, which I think is super cool. That's a great idea. Yeah, so use maker stencils or things like that, because then you can you know, have one section that's spotlighted and then have the rest just be normal ink blending, which makes it stand out. It's not I never would have thought of that. So yeah, that's creative. That's definitely outside of the box for sure. Why, thank you. <laughs> And I'm actually gonna do this. Another okay, one. we gotta do the dusty dusty. Dusty dusty, yay! <laughs> dusty dusty. I like this duo job because it kind of sticks before you even put it in, so you don't have to worry about it shifting. Right. It holds it in place well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Simon, we just did the same foils again. <laughs> oh yeah, we are on the same wavelength <laughs> with our foil colors. <laughs> oh, I love that purple watercolor too. That's really cool. So I was gonna do one with ink blending and then one with markers to show the difference. Awesome, that sounds great. You always wanna let it cool. How's everybody doing out there? Are you guys foiling along with us? It got awfully quiet. Oh, mine crinkled. <laughs> My foil did not smooth. Is that normal? <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. You know, it's like, you know, we talked about different kinds of inks and papers and foils. There, There is a different uh, foiling, you know, kind of, um, how can I say this? Different types of foil and some foils are heavier than other foils. So for example, this foil that I'm using on the left is deco foil and the foil on the right that I'm using is um, it's a Starcraft foil. So it's designed for textile foil. So it's a little bit heavier. So you have awesome. less of that. You have less static, less crinkling, less flaking with different types of foil. So I see. Uh, and I think it might be how I put it in too, because the edge was a little bit crinkled. And so I think yeah, that could have pushed it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's reveal. Look at that. Okay. Even with the crinkles, it still is pretty cool. It is really, really cool. That's the perfect style of foil for that design too, because it does look like it's a, like a sunset. Totally. And you can even go back and send it to that duo gel and just put a lot of pressure and you can kind of fill in some of those areas with the excess. That is the advantage of the duo gel. All you need is pressure. You don't need any heat with that duo gel. Yeah. So it kind of filled it in pretty nicely. Let me do the bottom one too. So y'all, that's a good tip. Okay. So there's right. that sun. Oh, I love it. Oh, and yours looks so cool. I love that toner sheet too. Yes. 
So for that one, I'm gonna move this other one aside and I'm gonna just do some ink blending. And I have these brand new inks I just got from Brutus Monroe. Oh yeah. They blend beautifully. So I have my little blending tool. So excited you guys love them. I was watching your video the other day about them. And, you know, so exciting. I just ordered all the re-inkers from scrapbook.com. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so, yeah, amazing. Scrap Thank yeah. you for all the support. No problem. Your your, uh, so what's cool is with the with the foil is it resists the ink so I can blend this background to be any color I want it to be. That's amazing. So yeah, it totally resists that ink and then you can go in and you know I can be going over top of the sun and it's not going to really affect anything. Oh, I love it. You know, I would have never thought to do this unless if we were doing a foil video together. So this is a lot of fun. But that's what we're here to do is learn from each other and help other crafters learn tips right. and tricks along the way. Totally. And I made this maker stencil um, because I wanted, you know, I always see like a grass stencil or a cloud stencil. And right. I wanted like everything in one stencil. So you got clouds, you got grass, hills, the sun. Oh, you have clouds. cute birds in there. Yeah. Leah was just saying the other day, I don't have a sun stencil. And I was like, no, we don't have one. I think Elizabeth sent her one, which was nice. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I totally missed a spot right there. There we go. So now I have this beautiful background. This is also from Crafty Critta, you guys that are looking. Crafty Critis gave us a discount code for a few more days. It's Nancy01 and you get 20% off their brand new released foil art. If you awesome. use that code, so check it out. And again, it's great for our Australian fans because there's not a huge selection in Australia. So this company um, has storage solutions. They now have foils and foil art. So great place for our friends in Australia. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, because I know there's always questions on where you can find stuff. So that's great that they have a, a source for their foiling and stuff now. And I just like to take a soft microfiber towel and just give it a quick buff so that I get all the ink off of my foil and my foil looks stunning. That's beautiful. And then on the one with the butterflies, I'm actually going to take some markers. Actually, I think I'll do the same thing. I will ink blend the background first and then we'll color it in with markers. All right, this is a ton of fun. Okay, so I just did that whole background with the clouds. And so then I'll do what Nancy did and we'll take my little towel and buff off that foiling to make sure there's no ink left on it. But I just love this. And so this could be like a great encouragement card or something like that. You could chop it down and add a little sentiment on here. Um, you could even use this as a scene and put a mountainside or something like that. But um, I really like wanted to just continue the clouds and make it really nice and simple. But yeah. I love Even just a hey sunshine, you know. Right. It's, yeah. It just pops. That sun just pops so much. Just simple and uplifting. Totally. Oh, I love it. Okay. Let's see. Anybody have any questions? I think they got stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> They're normally not this quiet. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, someone said, Simon, add some birds. Okay, sounds good, I will. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay. The number one rule is make sure you have live chat on, Nance. <laughs> 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 hey, look, I can see everything now. <laughs> that was my Oh, so you weren't even nice. seeing the comments. No, I was like, where are all the comments? I saw like random. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, they were all they were all coming through pretty fast on my screen. Okay. Now I see you guys. Are you laughing at me? Renee says, you are my sunshine would be a nice sentiment on there. Totally. There are the birds. I love that. It just adds a little more detail even. So cool. Oh, you got the are those the Karen brush markers? These are the Kareen brush markers. They're so nice. I just ordered some, so I'm excited about them. 
Um, they're really nice. They're juicy. I don't really like, I'm not really good at doing brush lettering, but I like doing kind of watercoloring and these markers are so nice and juicy. And yeah, I, I, one of, one of my subscribers sent them to me and actually two subscribers sent me two different sets. So I love them. Any nice. chance I can use them, I'm using them. Yeah. I'm excited to try them out. Okay, we're gonna try writing Hey Sunshine, but it might, might fail, but we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. I don't have any sentiment that says that, so. So Simon, when you are crafting and coming up with ideas and you're not on camera, do you like do anything? Do you watch TV shows, listen to music? Oh my gosh, totally. Yeah, I love, um, you know, one thing I like to do is listen to podcasts, but yeah, I'll watch YouTube. Um, I'll put on like a live stream. I'm always, you know, in yours or Christopher's live streams. And that's probably because I'm crafting while I'm there. Um, but yeah, tons of different stuff. But I think um, YouTube and music are probably my favorite things. And so I'll just watch any kind of YouTube videos, not even just crafting. Um, that's how I stumble upon different channels. And that's kind of how I found you too, which was so awesome. We know you like the new Taylor Swift album. I have not gotten that yet. I will have to eventually. Oh, it is good. Yes, it is a phenomenal album. In fact, I didn't really like it at first. So everybody's gonna comment me in the comments, but I think it always takes like one or two listens and then you really get her storytelling and, and everything yes. that she's gonna say in the album. And I think, yeah, I really love it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Really Leah awful. is huge into Billie Eilish. And at first I was like, okay, she sings the bad guy song. But then once I heard Ocean Eyes and the rest of her music, I was like, wow, this girl is very soulful in her music. Very much so. Yeah. I love her too. She has some amazing music. Yeah. Music's one of my favorite things to just listen to while I'm crafting or on a road trip. And I just love finding new artists and things like that. So yeah, Billie Eilish is one of my favorites too. Me and Leah have a lot in common. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, there was another question I was going to, how about snacking? Do you snack when you're crafting? Um, not so much while I'm crafting because my fingers are usually messy. Um, <laughs> however, let's see, what's a snack that I like? I go through phases where I like really love a snack and then I'll overeat it and then I'll feed it. <laughs> and then you'll be I'm sick of it. Right, so I'm kind of in the middle of a couple. I just like love, okay, cereal is one of my favorites. Um, cinnamon Toast Crunch will never get old. <laughs> but I just eat it like dry and I'll like bring it upstairs and just eat it out of a bowl um, without any milk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There's Cheez-Its have been pretty good over quarantine. <laughs> it's all different, different snacks that I go through phases with. I had a Teddy Graham phase and they were all um, like sold out of them for a little while during quarantine. <laughs> yeah, we just found out. Did you hear that Dr. Pepper is going to be going under a shortage? <gasps> oh, no. Better stock up. Y'all know that's my fave, too. That's, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bye, Pam. Have a good night at work. Let's see here. Bernie says, Simon, you need a laser printer. Oh, we'll get Simon into printing. Don't worry. I think I'll have to. <laughs> yes. We're going to have Simon printing his own foil art designs. Yeah, my weakness is gummy bears, always. Let's see here. Jan says hers are Sour Patch Kids. Bonnie, La she said dry cereal, yay. Barbara Drake said Twizzlers. I think Ryan also said Twizzlers. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy says, I like Billie Eilish, but she makes me want to take a nap. She sings so quietly. Tracy, you haven't listened to all her songs then. <laughs> Right. There's like See, some that, mosh pit songs in there. I do like her like quiet singing too and I like yes. music like that because that's usually what I like work to because it's calmer. So that's why I kind of liked her music too. <laughs> Ernie says, Simon, they have those cinnamon toast crunch bars in the granola bar aisle now. Uh, I have had those. Those are good. I had them on a road trip. Those are really good. <laughs> they taste more like a dessert than a cereal though. <laughs> All right, let's see that. Wow. I love you it. You did that hot through the mink, right? Yep, this was with the Transfer Gel Duo and I just put it through the mink and you get that cool, and it has that cool texture that we were talking about earlier because of the gel. Right. Love yeah. it. I'm gonna do one cold 
And I know if you guys um, check out Simon's video that he's going to post tomorrow, you'll see how we do this with the hot and cold. But since Simon did that one hot, I'm going to show you the exact same deco gel uh, duo. I'm going to do this cold through the Gemini using some of this new teal shift foil from H and H. And I think that's a, was that a Gina K stencil underneath there? That is a Gina K stencil. I know yep. my stuff. <laughs> yes, you do. Let's see here. Yeah. And I'll just go here and ink up this background. So there like you're kind of talking about, you could totally do that and then kind of wipe it off after you're done. Using some Simon Hurley Create inks, which you guys should totally pick up. <laughs> And I like to foil on black because it pops. Totally, yeah. I didn't even think about that when I was doing the uh, the gel, but yeah, it definitely gives a really cool look when you foil on top of black. Ooh, that looks awesome. And I don't need to do anything else to it. It looks good on its own. Maybe pop a small sentiment on there and that's right. it. That's what I think is so cool about foiling too, is you don't really have to do a ton to make it really just stand out. Yeah, this one is the Snowflake Mandala Stencil. Um, one of the tips that um, Ryan reminded us of the other night, Ryan, what do we not use with our stencils when we're foiling? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm excited for the response. <laughs> Got a sense of suspense here. We're gonna go into Ryan style stenciling here in a second. <laughs> so Simon, I don't know if you know this or not, but we have um, we have a nickname for Ryan, and it's um, Tiny Tim because he loves Tim Holtz's style so much that he has found a way to kind of duplicate and perfect it. And you, I, I'm telling you, I think if you put a Tim Holtz, Tim Holtz piece next to a Ryan piece, it would be pretty difficult to determine who made it. That's awesome. It's really good. Yes. And he's right. You're right, Ryan. Pixie spray. Correct. <laughs> oh, yes. Pixie spray. <laughs> we had talked about that earlier with the uh, not using it to make sure that it doesn't get the foil all over. Right. But yeah, I, I love Pixie spray in some cases where like if you have a really thin gel going for your stencil, that's when yes. I would use pixie spray, but otherwise yes. I find that it kind of makes my stencils a little too sticky. Yes. And I think sometimes too, I like, actually I leave my pixie spray over by my scan and cut because sometimes the mats aren't as sticky. And so it's just nice to spray the mats with it. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Oh, I love this. We all know me. I love my color. That's awesome. Wow, that is beautiful. Super bright. I love it. Oops. Yeah, that would be cool, even with the silver foil or something like that, too, just to keep it kind of monochromatic in the front. But yeah, I love it. Okay, I think one other thing that could be kind of cool, too, is I'll try this. Um, with my inks, you could, you could spray them to kind of react them. So let's do a little bit of spray to add a little bit of interest to this background. Absolutely with you. So there are basically two types of sprays that you guys can use. There is the mink reactive mist, if you can get a hold of it, or you can use distress resist spray. Sometimes these do get a little clogged because it's basically an adhesive. So if that happens, you just want to unscrew that and just kind of flick it. Um, and then you want to let that completely dry before you, before you foil over it. And again, I like to use scrap pieces of foil for this. Yeah, let's use this one. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know if I make mine to work. <laughs> <Mine might laughs> yeah, you're cool. probably going to have to unscrew it and flick it.
Ryan says your inks make the best rainbow blends. Well, thank you, Ryan. Yeah, we had tons of fun. Make I'm always so excited when people love the inks. Stacy wanted to know if you ever got your scan and cut fixed. What was wrong with your scan and cut? I didn't hear about this. See, I never did, <laughs> but it's not really their fault because I just got too lazy to keep messaging people. So I just, it's just chilling there, but it, um, <laughs> it wouldn't feed the mat in. So I, I probably should okay. contact um, them. And I was planning to do it right after the move because we just um, opened the scan and cut again. So yeah, I'll probably end up getting it fixed pretty soon. But yeah, it just wouldn't feed the mat in for some reason. It was kind of weird. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna flick on some. Yep. And then what you can do also as a trick is lay it on top of your mink, and the heat from the mink will come up and kind of warm it. And it'll dry pretty quickly. Awesome. I'm just grabbing some scrap I pieces. I did stuff a while back, but um, I haven't used it in a, in a long time. <laughs> kind of excited. Because I remember I loved it for, um, this is also really good for masking off like images and stuff like that. So if you uh -huh. cut out a mask and then spray over top of it, I loved that for like masking off an image and giving it a glossy look too. Which I think was the original intention of it, right? I think he does a lot of different um, kind of mixed media techniques with it. Yes. All right, I am just grabbing a scrap, scratch piece of foil for this one. And this is the distressed background. If you guys saw when I did my videos with Ryan. And so all I've done is sprayed some of that distress resist spray on there. This is just a scratch piece of foil as you can see it's been used already but that's okay because we're going for a distressed kind of grungy eclectic look here bernie says the mat problem is known you can get a new mat from them just contact them so maybe it's not the machine just the mat that's what i'm thinking yeah i'll have to i'll have to reach out to them and, and let them know all right thanks bernie yeah thank you very much yeah, I tried a little while back and I was just having a little hard time, but that was at the beginning of all this COVID stuff. So I, I don't blame them. I see some acetate there. Yes, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the toner sheets. This is acetate from um, Brutus Monroe and Deco Foil. And I almost forgot my dusty dusty. I was just gonna say, Simon, dusty dusty. <laughs> Do not forget it here. Dusty, dusty. Especially with all that toner on this one, such big areas. So you gotta make sure you dusty, dusty it first. Someone said I can keep my Snickers in the freezer. <laughs> I think they're talking about where they're hiding their snacks. Oh, I see. I ordered a cake the other day and I just, or it was like mini cakes. I don't hide my snacks. I just write my name on it huge so nobody else eats it. <laughs> and you have a younger brother, right, Simon? Um, I have two older brothers. Oh, okay. So you're the youngest. Okay. Yep. Yep. So we were just discussing the other day when you know, your, when your family members need a card, they probably come to you and say, hey, I need a card and forbid that one day you're like, here, here's a card that maybe you bought or someone sent to you and you didn't make it. Do they give you a hard time about that? Oh, like if, if someone gets a card and it's not handmade? Yeah, like this isn't a Simon handmade card, right? You know, there is, there is a drawer in this craft room that is stockpiled full of cards. So yeah, if anybody needs a card, they just walk in here, grab one, don't even ask anymore. Like they used to ask and now it's just like, <laughs> now it's just like take them. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think we'll be running out anytime soon, but um, I think people really enjoy when they're handmade, but I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody would be offended if it wasn't. <laughs> oh, that dusty, dusty pays off. 
Yes, it does. Look at the difference. Do you have the one that you did earlier? Oh, that was the butterfly one you did earlier. Yes, I think so. Let me grab it. I think it was this one. There's some little black marks here. But we double foiled it, so it might have filled in. Yeah, it probably did fill it in. Oh, no, I think this, this was the one. Yeah, you see. Yes, black. you can see it on the top right of the wing of the butterfly. There's a little black spot there, and in the middle of the other butterfly. Yes. Yep. So Simon yes. learned the hard way. Dusty, dusty. Dusty, dusty, guys. I love this. Wouldn't this be like a cool like overlay for like a holiday card or something? I don't know. I could like put it. Almost looks like ornaments. Yeah, I think that'd be so cool. Make a shaker card. Yeah. The, the acetate's so cool because it's a different thing then, you know? Then it's more well, like- Everybody loves see-through, you know, anything Fine. that's translucent. Definitely. Okay, so here's the resist spray. So how do we foil with this? <laughs> so you just put a piece of foil on it like this. Oh, and, then, and then run it through? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yours looks really cool. Okay, my patterns aren't this cool. We'll, we'll run it well, through. As long as, it's, as long as it's dry, it'll work. So that one, you know, these two are kind of plain pieces of paper. Now this one, oh, this is the one I had used for alcohol ink. And look, the alcohol ink transferred onto the paper. That's a hot mess. Oh, I think that's <laughs> really cool. <laughs> well, that's what's cool about doing a distressed kind of look. So this is a panel that Ryan and I created on a live not too long ago. Ryan really showed me how to use some distress oxides. And all I did was spray some of that and put some gold on there. And that almost looks like a galaxy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, Ryan's cards are amazing. Ryan, you're doing some great work. I checked out your Instagram, it looks so cool. I saw some of the cards you blended with my inks using like that. You did such a beautiful rainbow blend too, so. Well, Ryan is the reason why I got your inks because he was like, Nats, you got to try these inks. You got to try these inks. And I was <laughs> like, okay, I'll get them. So I saw that Brutus Monroe had them as a whole bundle. So I ordered them all as a bundle. And then, like I said, I just ordered all of the reinkers through scrapbook.com. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for the support, guys. It really means the world. How do you add toner to your acetate? So um, Bonnie, the toner on the acetate is in a pack. Um, I think maybe you could print it at home. I'm not sure, but you can. Um, yep, Bonnie, you can print that at home. I'll link my videos for you. Um, awesome. You use your laser printer and you use um, specialized heat acetate to print on laser printers. It's also in my Amazon shop, or you can purchase pre-printed ones. And I believe that the one that Simon used was a Brutus Monroe one. Yes. Yep. It was a Brutus yeah, Monroe so pack. There are some companies that sell them like that. And for me, that's just so easy. <laughs> that's something I reach for because it's like, I'm, I'm a little too lazy to go do all the machines. So, Ooh, that's pretty cool. Now okay. that is neat. I was going to say, mine's not as cool as yours, but I, I think like it. I like this. This was cool. Yes, like, that stands out for sure. It looks like a coffee ring kind of almost. I was thinking the same thing. If you're doing a coffee card and you do like a bronze color foil on there. Okay, y'all. Now we're doing now we're doing it. <laughs> now we're doing a coffee <laughs> card. Let's try it again. <laughs> I'm gonna grab out more stark white cardstock and I'm gonna try the coffee look by just doing like circles like I kind of did on that first one. So first we'll do a couple of flicks. I think we have created a foiling snob, you guys. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> this is fun. I think this is going to create a fun coffee card for sure. Now that I love like the kind of happy accidents like this, where it's like, and then you realize that, oh, hey, that would be cool for a, mm -hmm. you know, blank looking card.
And you know what's really cool about that technique, Simon? You don't have to do dusty dusty because it really doesn't matter on that. Right, that's what I like about it. <laughs> I forget my dusty dusties. <laughs> Bonnie, that is distress resist spray. Yes. Liz, those were the brand new um, Crafty Crita Foil Arts. I um, showed these off yesterday. It's a brand new company out of Australia. And these are some of the designs that I foiled a whole bunch yesterday. I foiled some today for you guys. Um, there is a discount code. We'll link everything down below for you. And everything that we're using, we'll link down below in the description for you guys as well. All right, so mine is drying on top of my mink. That was a good tip, Nancy, to, to uh, set it on top of here and have it dry on there because it dries yes. pretty quick. Pretty yes, quick. just do that. And I have uh, to say that the mink makes all the difference when you're foiling. It sure does, it sure does. It's a huge difference. So I wanna show you guys, for those of you that um, missed what I did the last couple of days of foiling, I have a whole bunch of samples here while we're waiting. So again, you can purchase high quality toner printed sheets. There's some from um, Gina K. There's some from Brutus Monroe. There is some you can print at home from kitchen sink stamps. If you're a member of the Foiling Snobs Club, we have a whole free library for you to print your own foil art from home. Um, there's a new, and there's also, um, oh, who did, wait, who did I use earlier today? Unity Stamps has a whole bunch. That's who we used here. Um, and you can, if you have a high quality laser printer, you can print them yourself. And the example I gave before is, think about when you're using dye inks and pigment inks. When you use a dye ink, it soaks into your paper. And when you use a pigment ink, it sits on top of your paper. So it's the same thing with using an inkjet printer or a laser printer. The inkjet printer ink will soak into your paper. The toner from the laser printer will sit on top. So when it sits on top, it gives the foil something to stick to. What happens is as this goes through the mink and the mink is specialized because it's much hotter and it gives it pressure, it kind of melts down the toner just enough for the foil to stick to it. And then once it cools down, when you peel it, the foil sticks to your toner design and nowhere else. So you have to make sure that you have the right equipment, the right papers, the right printer. It's just like when we started stamping, I think all of us had different kinds of inks, different kinds of stamps, different kinds of papers until you learn what works best for your ultimate end result. So always keep that in mind. What is your end result? Where are you trying to go with this? If you're a casual foiling person, you're okay with you know what's out there. Just like if you're a casual stamper, if you're somebody who really wants Maybe. to take this to another level, then we have other options for you to look into. Totally. And I think, like you said, it's really up to the user to be like, hey, you know, this cardstock works best for me with this. And right. even with ink blending and all that, you know, my cardstock works best for me, but that doesn't always right. mean that for every right. technique for everybody. That's right. That's right. Don't be fooled by saying, oh, I have to have this because so-and-so has it. You use what works best for you. It might be budget. It might be location. Maybe you don't order things online and you can go to a local store and that's all they carry. Maybe you can't go to a local store. Like Tracy told me, she doesn't have a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby. Everything is an hour away from her. So she really has no choice but to order from online or drive an hour. So it's all about your access, your, um, the ease of accessibility, the budget you're working with. And again, your end result. Where, where are you trying to get with that? Totally. So this is an Alta new stencil that I used the um, paste through and then I went through and stenciled it. And I really love how the imperfections in the paste oh, really that. make this look like a city scene. Yeah, that made it look, I thought that texture was in the stencil. Yeah, really nope. Cool. There's another one with the paste. Here's one where we did some um, foiling with heat and bond light and heat and bond light for those of you that don't know is sold in the sewing section and it's used to do iron-ons so if you use a certain kind of foil um, we do recommend textile foil not all foils are the same there's paper craft foil and there's textile foil you can literally feel the difference in thickness but if you wanted to do iron-on logos on your shirts on bags things like that you can use um 
heat and bond light to be the adhesive. Well, we put heat and bond on paper. And this is from one of our members, Bill, who gave us this little secret tip. Here's a Gina K background, beautiful. And then here's, a, here's that same background. We took the waste paper and did it with heat and bond. I love those. Those are so cool. And all the different varieties. You know, when you first jump into foiling, you don't realize there's so much, but it's right. so cool to have so many different options for you. I think just like stamping, people think foil comes in silver and it comes in gold. Well, as you can see, <laughs> there that are hundreds of that. colors and styles and designs of foil. This is a design I printed from kitchen sink stamps from home. So we give you some tips and tricks on printing from home and having good quality. That is awesome. You know what this kind of looks like? A galaxy. <laughs> so I would ink blend over it. I think I'm going to, that looks cool. It looks like different planets. Yeah, I would totally ink blend over that. Let's do it. <laughs> While you're doing that, I will foil some more of these. Awesome. And if you guys have any questions or little conversation starters or anything you really wanna know, let us know in the comments. I finally got to meet Leah live now too, which is awesome. Yeah, it's so cute. I took a picture of her sitting in the chair talking talking to Simon through the, the, the camera. And, you know, that's one of those scrapbook moments. Totally. I think it's so cool when, when kids start kind of crafting and are going to continue this industry. I think that's so amazing to have people involved at such a young age. Well, and she's the same age as Jennifer McGuire's daughter and her daughter's name is Lila, right? Mm -hmm. So we have Leah and Lila and who knows where they're going to be in 10 years when they're your age. Right. Where you're going to be in 10 years, you know, you, you may be toting those two around with your Simon Hurley collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. It, it's, it's so cool to see. Yeah. Like I said, kind of her growing up in this industry, but also like, you know, I think it's so important for kids to kind of join in the handmade stuff because right now everything's turning to digital, but it's, it's mm -hmm. cool to know that there's still people interested in this, you know? Hi, Kiki. Kiki wants to know, Simon, how did you first get started and why, what got you interested in this? Definitely. Um, so I first got started because I was um, working. I always loved crafts when I was a kid. Um, and I was working with alcohol inks to create like different backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, Cause I ran into them at like a Michael's and I didn't know like what to do with all the backgrounds that I was creating. And so then I searched it up on YouTube and I found videos from Jennifer and Christina and I immediately just fell in love with card making and all the different things you could do with it because sometimes other crafts get boring because you know there's not a whole industry and there's not always products releasing and, and so some, sometimes those things got a little bit boring for me so I found card making and, and fell in love because it was such a big industry that always had new releases and a whole community behind it which I think was so important for me. Um, and so that's kind of how I got started. And then I wanted to share my work online um, and kind of moved to the outlet of YouTube. Um, I kind of grew up in the era where people like were starting YouTube channels and um, and that was just thing interesting to me to, to be able to interact with everybody and interact with all of you guys and, and share my work. Um, so that's kind of the short story on how I got started. And then doing the YouTube videos was just kind of a fun thing for me and it never was, meant to be anything more. And then it was kind of crazy that that kind of took off a little bit. It took off a lot, it took off a lot. Congratulations. Simon is, I believe the youngest crafter to have his own line of inks, stamps, stencils, papers, and to be signed with a reputable company like Ranger, congratulations. Coming up on almost two years now, right? Almost two years, yep, it's exciting. Nice. I remember how excited I was in that first meeting. It was kind of insane. While still being a junior in high school and just recently graduated. Yes, yeah, that was that was a lot for sure. Um, it was a lot for me to do this and do crafting and 
also keep up with meetings and my schoolwork, but it all worked out in the end. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of continue it full time now. I think I, I always say everything happens for a reason, Simon. So all of your hard work has paid off and we are certainly thankful that this is the path you have chosen to go down at this time. And we're, we're proud to be part of your journey. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited about it. And, and it's been so much fun, even the past, you know, month or months, even though, you know, everything that's going on in the world isn't really optimal. Um, it's kind of fun to, to even take these times where, you know, not everybody's able to see each other and do videos and really connect with people online. And, and we were talking about it earlier, how you've been connecting with everybody during this time, which I think is so cool mm -hmm. and so important to have, um, you know, during everything that's going on. Yes. And I am very thankful to have you invite me on your channel and you guys, Simon's going to be showing that tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe to Simon's channel. If you're not already also follow him on Instagram as well. He does these cute little clips. What are they called? Reels. They're new. They're Reels. like, it's like the new TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do that. So uh, check that out. I love the blending, Simon. I love, love the water reactive splats on there. That is really does look like a colorful galaxy. Beautiful. Thank you. I think it turned out really cool in the end. I love this kind of resist foiling too. I didn't really think to do that even. Aaron's asking, are you, I'm, um, were you planning on going to college? And if so, what would your major be? We talked about this a little bit earlier, what my major would probably be. My major would probably be in English. Um, that was my favorite thing besides um, what I'm doing right now or graphic design or something like that. But I think, you know, with what I was doing, I kind of learned graphic design because I design all my stamps and I do all my video thumbnails and um, I learned video editing. And so it's kind of crazy that the internet and growing up on it has really taught me a lot of things that I might have majored in otherwise. Um, and so I haven't found the need to really do anything yet. But yeah, if I were to go to school, it's always there for me. And I can right. kind of decide then. That's right. Hey, if you can save yourself from, you know, $100,000 in student loan debt and still have a job making your own hours and being your own boss, go for it. <laughs> right, right, definitely. Awesome. So everyone that's asking, yes, we will link everything down below. The admins are linking um, where you can purchase some of the items that we are displaying here. Um, the H and H foil is a company that we're recommending for value because you get a 12 inch roll of foil by 25 feet of foil for right around $10. And that includes specialty graphics. So any kind of foil that is holographic, that has stars or anything like that, they have pretty much everything in plain foil, holographic foil, um, lots of cool designs. So you wanna check that out. Uh, most everything else I can link to either Amazon or scrapbook.com or Brutus Monroe for you guys. I even have a ThermoWeb and a Gina K link for you guys to check out as well. And um, I saw another question on there. What was it about? Yes, and Foiling Snobs Club is our Facebook group. We say that jokingly. It actually started off as Foiling Stamping Club, um, and we changed it to Foiling Snobs Club because the owner of Creative Vision Stamps, Laura, who taught me how to foil, I've been doing foiling for four to five years now. Um, she really taught me all of these secret tricks that I'm sharing with you guys, and she's the first one that introduced me to textile foil, which is really good quality foil, and so... We jokingly changed the name of our Facebook group to Foiling Snobs Club, not because we're snobs, but because we always want to make sure we're using what's best for us. Again, you know, we just talked about what is your end goal. So if you want to have beautiful foiling without any spots, without any flaking, have a good quality, good value, then you want to join us and we accept everyone. Our only rule is you have to be nice. That's it. And that's a good rule. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna grab one of my stamp sets. This one's called Space Training and I'm just gonna pull a sentiment and use oh, it. Oh, that's it. awesome. It's like made for that. Right? Totally. And Crafty Critter, like I said, just yesterday, 
um, sent me these from Australia for us to launch for you guys. And the code Nancy01 will give you a discount, but it's only on the foil art. And if you are in the US, you will pay international shipping. So just keep that in mind because uh, they are based out of Australia. Um, Stacy said, Simon, I love your peel apart background stamps. That was ingenious and something that I can't believe is just being now thought of. Well, thank you. Yeah, last year it was kind of funny because I was using some of those rubber stamps that come on plastic sheets mm -hmm. and some of them like have all of the backing on it just as like kind of a way to hold them in. Like it wasn't something that you'd use that had a design on it. And I went up to Ranger and I was like, could we do that? But like have everything be a design and the things that you peel apart part of your design and they went for it and I couldn't sleep the night before that they came out. I was like, are people gonna think these are weird? Um, but it ended up going over really well and I'm so thankful for you guys. Well, and I think it is a genius idea because so many of us do cut apart our stamps and I think people are afraid to cut apart their stamps. And right. when you buy a stamp and it's already done for you, you don't feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, a lot of people are afraid to cut them. I say, I say go for it. When it makes your stamps more versatile and you're getting more for your money, I think it's worth it. Agreed. All right. Usually I would use a trimmer here, but I'm just going to try to go in and freehand this. Oh, this one's not open yet. And keep going with your question, guys. We're definitely reading them. Yes, I am looking up from my cutting and reading them. <laughs> that looks great. And your stamps are going to look fantastic on that panel. Thank you, Tracy. Are you foiling some of the sheets? Yeah, I'm just trying to decide what foiling colors I want. There's so many to choose from. So many. <laughs> Yes, Bonnie said, Simon, show the pull apart stamps. So I'll grab those right after I'm done cutting this out. And I'll show you guys. So you guys had asked me before about black foil. And I did want to say there is one black foil. I will say um, probably not a good idea to purchase. And I'll show it to you. The only foil I will actually say not to purchase from h and h is the black holographic foil. And I'll show you why. So you can see on the front here, it is black foil. And on the back, you would think, oh, it's holographic, but it actually looks regular. And I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Not that black foil doesn't serve its purpose, but I wouldn't spend the extra $3 on holographic foil. You can get regular black foil, which is still going to be shiny. And I believe it's $6.95 instead of $9.95. So just purchase the regular black foil. Don't get the black holographic foil. Um, because you'll see here in a second when you foil with it, it just looks black. There's no holograph to it at all. And, you know, this is nice. You know, you do have those toner sheets, but once I foil the black, it's really going to lock in and give us that kind of shiny look. And the other thing is then I will have this piece of black that I'll be able to double foil and make those butterflies any color I want underneath. Black foil is great if you're doing sentiments because sometimes we print a sentiment and it just like it's there, but it really doesn't stand out when you stamp it in black, even if you heat emboss it in black. We'll try foiling it in black. If you laser print it and foil in black, it really just makes it pop. You can see the difference when you foil it in black. All right, so I'm gonna just quickly share these because Bonnie wanted to- Yeah, show them to us. See them. So these are the peel apart background stamps. Um, there may be more. I think there is, there's a couple more in the line. There's like waves and music notes and stuff like that and more coming for sure soon. Um, but these are a part of a collection. We actually started out with I don't know where I had put it, but we started out with music notes in the line. And yep, we had I like that one. Yes. That yeah, that was one of my faves. And then, and then we morphed into things like this, where it's the watercolor blooms, and then a piece of the design actually comes out. And so you have a couple different pieces in this one. You know, this piece pops out. 
over here you have this one some little um, other flowers and leaves and stuff like that but the cool part about this is you can stamp the whole background or you could peel out pieces and use individual parts of the design so some of these birthday hats peel out in this one a row of trees and the individual trees peel out here this repeatable design peels out from the center so you've got a lot of different options um you know in the line of what to do and i love this because it's the same price as any other background stamp these peel apart um it's the same price but you get like a background stamp and a stamp set basically so versatile yeah and I mean, you get a border stamp, you get a background stamp, you get an individual stamp, you get, you can do mixed media where it's not all one stamp on the background. You can break it up and put it anywhere you want. So it's very versatile doing that way. Totally. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things that we came up with. And I'll even show you too. Uh, you can ink up this whole background, but I'll even show just the one inked up i'm moving off a little bit from foiling i hope you don't mind <laughs> oh that's okay simon we love having you here you can come and visit anytime yeah i might i might it's a lot of fun it's fun to sit down and craft with everybody else you're not watching and you know just kind of commenting you can actually be interacting right totally so here you can go in and the cool part about having the individual stamp is then I can ink it up with multiple colors and not have to worry about getting any other part of the background inked up. I'm bringing in some of my Simon Hurley Create inks. The edge. And there you go. So you can build up little scenes with like the different images that you peel apart from the stamp. That is gorgeous. Thank you. Yay, Bonnie said, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of us will be ordering them. Well, thank you so much for the support, guys. All right, now back to now back to the foiling show. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to do some more ink blending. So I'm using Prom Queen, which you need to just rename Nancy Stamps because that is my color. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So then I'm gonna go in with kind of what you're doing and do one of those um, toner sheets because I want to see how those blend with the inks. Yeah, so these are printed and, and that's a that's a video for another day is, um, you know, I try to educate crafters on how to print and do your own foiling from at home. You can get a $99 um, laser printer and you can create your own. You know, we have a lot of graphic designers in our groups and they've created a lot of designs that you can print from home and foil yourself. So if there's a design that you can't find or you can't get or you just need something you know right now specifically you can print it at home by yourself and i show the tips and tricks on what kind of paper to use what kind of foils to use so there are little things like that if you are new to foiling definitely check out my playlist i do hot foiling as well as toner foiling right now we are doing toner foiling or mink foiling there is a completely different foiling system which is a hot foiling system, which we won't get into today. Um, <laughs> but I do, you know, kind of show the ins and outs, the advantages to both systems and how to get the best out of what you have. That's awesome. Yeah, I love how much you share about foiling. You really learn a ton every single time. Yes. And I want you guys to have this much fun when you get home and when you hand at handmade card to somebody you go in that they your family goes into the drawer like they do at simon's house and says hey i need a card let me grab this one that the recipients like this is cool you made this right you yeah know, we want them to say no you didn't you bought it <laughs> yeah that foiling really adds that extra touch to it All right, so I'm going to go in here with some of these flowers and try to do some selective inking. So I'm just inking up, you know, different flowers with different colors. 
which is so much fun to do. Tracy says, that's your, that's my card you're making, Nancy. You know what, Tracy? I think it needs a hugs or a hello on it. So let me, let me foil that and put it on there for you. <laughs> <laughs> reading all the comments I, know. I really do and i'm sure that you do too simon i've been a, i've been your fat in your facebook group watching all the posts and the cards we have some really amazing crafters following us and i don't know about you but i feel very lucky to have these people um follow and like and interact with each other and you know, coach each other on how to improve and be so nice to each other. And it's, it's like a whole other family. Totally. And it's, yeah, I started that Facebook group. If you guys want to join, it's called Stamping with Simon Hurley Create. And that was one of the best things I ever did because it was just, it creates a whole community um, where people can go and share their work. And yet we're so blessed to have these amazing communities that are, you know, working with our products or enjoying foiling together. And I think that's so cool that they can all, and us can all go into there and interact with everybody and really mm -hmm. have a great time crafting and stamping together. Yeah, it's such an amazing community and not not many communities are this lucky, so. Correct. Thank you all very much. Okay, and then I'll go in with a little bit of green too. Yes, yeah, but the detail daubers, that's what I use them for. Those little tiny areas. I usually will try to get away with this big blending tool, but in some small areas or some small stencils, you totally can't. And that's where those little detail blenders come in. And yeah. they're really inexpensive too, which I really like. Have you tried the Sukaneko ones that, um, let me see if I have them. So when you have those really fine areas, they have these, they're called Fantastics. And they have some that are a bullet point and some that are like a brush point. But if you have to get like, say you have to get in the center of that flower, you can just dip this right into your ink pad and then go right to your project. That's awesome. That's really nice. Yeah, I use these, these are just from Ranger and yep. they come in a pack of five, I think. But what I okay. love is that they're double-ended. Are those felt? Those are felt tip too. They're they're the same as gotta get the beauty beauty guru hand up. Um, they're the same as the other Ranger foams. The they're blending just, ones. Okay, uh, I was not uh, sure of that. That's great to know. And you said they're double ended. Yeah, and they're and they're very cheap too for or inexpensive for a pack of five. Okay, so I will link those for you guys in my Amazon shop. I will link everything in the Amazon shop and down below in the description for you. And for anyone that's watching this on the replay, make sure you have comments on and um, we'll have all of the links for everything. It takes 24 hours for the comments to show up, but we can have oh, yeah. all the links on pretty quickly for you. Awesome. And yeah, this is just, this is just so fun. And I'm excited to see what the foiling looks like on top of it, but even just with the toner lines, I'm just having fun going in here and blending. Yeah, that looks good like that. And now when you add your foil, it's gonna really, it's gonna be bling bling. Right, it's gonna just pop. I'm so excited. But yeah, it's a totally different experience than blending on my cardstock. Mine kind of sinks in a little bit more, whereas mm -hmm. on here, they kind of aren't dry for a little bit longer, but they do still sink into the cardstock. Yep, they give you a little bit more blending time, a little smoothness. Cool. Hello, Arlene. How are you? Yeah, Chow just linked the scrapbook.com link and I just purchased all the Simon Hurley um, re-inkers re for the inks. I also picked up a couple of stamps. They do have a small sale going on right now. And then we had a discount code. Chow, can you look up that 10% code so they can use that too?
what we do here. We share our good deals with you guys. Oh yeah. Nancy grabbed all of her reincars before you before you guys sold them all out though too. <laughs> that always happens in this group. I'm not even joking. <laughs> they these guys are so obsessed with their foiling. Not that it's a bad thing, but if they the mini minks all sold out. So Amazon once a month has a $40 mini mink sale. And I will post it in the morning and in two hours, all of the available mini minks will be sold. <laughs> and um Whenever there's a sale, like we see anybody having a sale on anything, we love Catherine Pooler. We love Tim Holtz, of course. Um, Christopher Allen. Christopher gave us 10% off embossing powder last time we were there. And he was like, holy, you guys, there's 200 of you in my store right now. That's awesome. <laughs> so it's like a swarm, okay? We find a good deal and we are all over <laughs> it. <laughs> so you got, how did you get a scrapbook.com code? That's awesome. I have my weights. <laughs> <laughs> They're so amazing over there. I love, I love. I them. love that they have such a variety of things in stock. They ship pretty quickly. Their customer service is amazing. So, you know, all of these things matter when you're a crafter and, you know, we don't just buy one thing. We go back for more and more and more. So um, I, I've been a supporter of scrapbook.com for a really long time. And they have been a supporter of me too. They were actually like the first people to discover me in this industry really like they yeah you used to like, do the little videos with them yeah when i was like 11 or 12 so it was really cool they're they're all so amazing over there so okay I mean, so let's have to tell them we need to go in and do a collab and be like hey we, we got to do some foiling right i agree <laughs> oh wait guess what i forgot to do did you not dust well it's really not going to matter too much on that one because of how open your designs are and your inks are really going to kind of cover it up Oh, Nancy, it matters. <laughs> it does? It matters. There's some black areas you'll see here. That's just, how you learn, Simon. Dusty, dusty. Just a few. Not too bad, though, if you just look at it from... Ooh, that is so cool. And all the different ink blending that you do makes it really pop out and, and shine, which is so cool. Oh, now I wish we did this on my video. This looks amazing. <laughs> 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 Retake. We're going to have to film again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so used to doing when I'm doing it with these guys, I'm like constantly dusty, 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 dusty. And I, I should have been doing that and just kind of get it stuck in your head. You well, when, dust, you, when you get your second duster brush, you will remember that one is for foiling and leave it without with your foiling stuff. Mm -hmm. you should just stick it on top of the mink so before you run it through the mink you're like why is that there oh i need to dust before i go through the mink that's a good idea that is a good idea <laughs> kind of like simon we're gonna have to get you an official fsc logo i'll have to send you one of those i think you will yeah that'd be that'd be nice ryan said earlier you get your official uh certificate your foiling snob certificate in a week to 10 days <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Jan, he knows to save the scrap foil. We went over that. We went over double foiling and the infinite circle of foiling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Y'all, I almost didn't dusty dusty yet. Not again. We can't have it three times in one live. <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning Nancy's ways now. <laughs> okay. okay. I think you do need, Melissa says she needs shirts that say dusty, dusty, dusty. Yes. <laughs> dusty, dusty. We'll have to talk to Heidi and ask her to make a little beep that comes up that says, did you dust before it goes through <laughs> the mic? Michelle said, what does the dusting do? 
So the dusting, if you're using like black toner, it gets rid of any dust or particles before you put it through the machine because any dust is going to leave that area black. It's not gonna foil because the dust is interfering with that. So you wanna make sure you get rid of all of the dust or embossing powder before it goes to the machine. Yes. And if you watch our video, you will see tomorrow on Simon's channel what the difference is. There was totally something in mind that it didn't foil perfectly, but I think it looks pretty good. Looks good. Okay. Well, and wherever you had dust that transferred off of the first first transfer will show up as missing on that transfer. Mm -hmm. Look how easy that was to put together, guys. And I used black foil. I didn't even use colored foil. Used Simon's ink to do ink blending and then just foiled the sentiment. Hello. Look how simple that is. Oh, I love With that. My friend, Tracy. That's so awesome. And did you, did you foil the, are the butterflies black foil? Black foil on the butterflies, yep. Nice, that's awesome. Such a simple, quick card, but like the foiling really makes it stand out nicely. The foiling is just so much darker than regular print. It just shines. Yeah, definitely. That looks really cool. Yes. So I'll show you guys an example of what happens if you dust and what happens if you don't dust. Hold on. Oh, there's 170 people in here. Hello, everybody. I did not know that. That is crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm so excited to do my video right after this. I'll get to editing and I'll have the video up by tomorrow, probably afternoon. So you guys can watch me and Nancy learning all the basics of foiling and Nancy really giving all of her different tips and tricks and all the different application methods um, to apply foil to your paper crafting. So make sure if you are not already, you subscribe to Simon's channel. Yep, it's just Simon Hurley, so you can find me on there. And oh. if you like this video so far and have learned something new today, whether it would be about stamping, ink blending, Simon's pull apart stamps or foiling, give us a thumbs up. Totally, give this video a big thumbs up guys. Right, so I'm going to give you guys an example here of dusting and not dusting. We'll show the difference. Yay. Um, Brianna Young says, I recently discovered both your channels. I started making cards during quarantine. Love both your channels. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brianna. Welcome. Charlotte says, are you kidding? Nancy and Simon at the same time? <laughs> Everybody go buy a lottery ticket. Right? <laughs> All right. So I am just going to, I'm just going to foil these two pieces of just toner paper because if you want to die cut, you can just die cut from toner. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You want to foil it ahead of time. So on this one, I'm going to dusty, dusty. Dusty, dusty, the dusty, back of my dusty. foil. Yep, the back of the foil and the toner sheet as best as you can. So if you have pets, and a lot of us do, the other day, if you guys watched my video, I had embossing powder on the desk and I used my other dust brush, the pretty one, this one to dust. And guess what happened? All that embossing powder fell into my foiling projects and I got the little black specks. So. I'm gonna show you the difference here between dusting and not dusting. Although I did clean my desk today, so it may not be that bad. <laughs> I love all the stuff that we created today. It looks really cool. I'm excited to like finish some of these off and turn them into cards. You did amazing, Simon. Thank you for coming on board with us. Totally. This was tons of fun and I'm really excited for the video tomorrow. Um, and it was so fun just kind of being live and shine with all of you guys. I was so excited to go live with Nancy. Judy said, Simon, will you make some of your own designs for foilables? Well, 
now that hmm. I've done so much spoiling, I think I'll definitely think about that. It's exciting. Yeah, you want to you want to dabble in your graphic designs. This is the place to do it. Right. Yeah, I think that'd be really fun to do. Maybe I'll release the pack. All right. Let me grab. Let's do. What should I do? I'm going to do another one of these foilables and I'll do some ink blending on it. Stacy wants to know, Simon, who influences your card making the most? Um, yes, I would say I don't have a huge influence anymore. But when I, because I always tell people, when you're starting in card making or even starting in foiling, you know, whatever you aspire to do, look at what other people are doing and be very inspired. Sometimes you can even copy them. I wouldn't mm -hmm. really it if you're copying them unless if you blatantly say, you know, hey, this was inspired by this person. Um, right. But then after a while, you kind of come into your own and you kind of find your own style. And so for me, it was just over time, I kind of created my own look and, and feel to the cards. And I, I think you can kind of tell when one was created by me. But um, like I said, at the very beginning, um, and still to this day, Jennifer McGuire has been a huge inspiration to me. Yes. Um, how she designs her cards, um, her kindness, um, and really everything kind of around that. She's been a huge inspiration in her different techniques. Um, and her videos being so technique driven has always kind of been my inspiration for me creating my videos. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think Jennifer McGuire is a huge influence for me as well. Tim Holtz, I just love watching him create. And it just, you know, it's like when we watch Ryan create, you think, oh my God, this is going to be a hot mess. I don't know what I'm doing here. And then when it's done, you're like, whoa, where did that come from? from totally. uh, Christina Warner we were talking about earlier um she has some beautiful designs you know so I think there's a lot of YouTubers out there and you pull a little bit of inspiration from each one but ultimately at the end of the day as you as you spend time doing this you will hone your own craft and come up with your own style your own designs and that's what we do here we aspire to um, help you guys with your creative flow, your creative juices. Sometimes you don't feel like it. You're just watching. You just don't have that crafting mojo and that's okay. Take a break, step back, watch some videos. And the next thing, you know, I don't know about you, Simon. Sometimes I dream up designs and I have to like write them down or, or, you know, get to make in, um, the admins and I were talking about this earlier. Sometimes you dream of a card, like you have an idea for a card. And sometimes you just make beautiful backgrounds like this and you can put them in a little box and you can save those backgrounds and turn them in the cards later. Oh, but whatever totally. you do, just have fun with it. There's no pressure. It's art. It's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, totally. And I could name so many people for, for inspirations, but um, yeah, like you said, there are so many amazing YouTubers, like even Christopher Allen, Christina Werner, like you said, um, so many awesome people in our community. I think there's so many amazing people and that's, like I said earlier, not something you really find in every industry where everyone's so kind and so welcoming and, and so talented too. So this is one page where I did Dusty Dusty and you can see when we reveal it that it is ultra smooth, perfect foiling, lot, not a speck out of place. So I could die cut with this now and it would be perfect. On the contrary, this is one that I did not dust. Okay, so what does your foiling look like? Can you see the difference between dusting and not dusting? Do you guys see those black spots in the foil? Totally. Amazing. Cool if you want a distressed look, not cool if we were going for perfect foiling. <laughs> Right. So dusty, dusty, just remember that before you run it through the mink, dusty, dusty, your um, sheet that you're foiling and the back side of your foil. If you don't know what the back side of your foil is, it's the ugly side. It's the matte side. This is the back side. And then what happens is as your foil releases, this is the release sheet. Um, when there's nothing left, then you can just throw that away. When there is a design on it, like this is, you can keep this and reuse it on another project. So I right, hope I'm, that is a good example for you guys. 
Yeah, totally. That makes a huge difference when you're flowing. That's one thing that I really learned a lot from you. Carmen wants to know, Simon, are your parents creative? Simon does, he does a few videos with his mom. Yes, we do. I think we're playing another one very soon. But um, yeah, she, she was a teacher ever since we were little. So we did a lot of okay. crafts together and things like that at home, which I think kind of um, helps that. But I've always been super creative and always wanted to do art and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, she's been on awesome. some videos and I think, I think we'll do another one very soon. Stacy wants to know, Simon, what do you love the most about working with Ranger? That's a great question. Yeah, I think one of my favorite things about working with them is um, there's a couple of things. I think one of the things that's one of my faves is that they kind of give creative control even to things that I thought they were going to say no to. Um, and so really the line is very much so me, um, even with the ink names and stuff. I thought I was crazy walking into the meeting with my ink names. Um, that didn't really have anything to do with the inks, but were just kind of fun and playful. And they right. accepted that, which I think is really awesome. They kind of let us take the reins with our own product lines. And then I think another thing that's really awesome about them is a lot of the stuff, um, or most of the products that we release are made in the U.S. So all of our stamps are made in the U.S. Um, yes, the inks that's are made awesome. here, And the inks are made in-house at Ranger. So what's cool about that and since I'm such a big ink person, I wanted mine to be really special and unique and didn't want to go with the same manufacturer everybody else was using. Which they so, are. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the cool part about that is we were able to go in with a chemist. We have our chemist at Ranger and he is amazing. And you can tell him exactly what you want and we'll go back and forth, fixing the ink and changing it until it becomes exactly what we want. Instead of just taking the ink that's already made and slapping our name on it. So I got to work on my inks, which was really special and made them something that I love to work with every single day. That's awesome. Yes. We that's just had awesome. a, a long answer. <laughs> yeah, but that's great because we just had a small conversation in our group about, you know, unfortunately there are stamp companies overseas, which steal the designs of U.S stamp designers and it's really hard to hold them accountable and do any kind of legal action against them and you know unfortunately a lot of people don't know that and they don't understand that so when your stamps are made in the U.S. first of all you're getting you're supporting U.S. workers um, but you have less likely chance of that happening of somebody stealing your design and then you guys going on a website and thinking you're buying a legitimate stamp and it turns out to be a fraudulent copycat of the stamp so um when it says made in the usa it just makes it a lot a lot easier for everybody that is beautiful thank you yeah i'm so excited um someone said gloria said um my son decided to reboot the internet so i missed five minutes we can always <laughs> watch the replay but that is not not always fun we had a, a cable guy who would come every once in a while when i was trying to do a live stream and would disconnect the the Wi-Fi while I was live, which isn't always the best. So I feel you on that one. So Carol, it's not so much the type of brush. It's just as long as you dust, you don't want a thick bristle brush. Um, Simon's using this, the, it's the Ranger sweeper, right? For his um, dusting. It's, it's by Tonic. It's the- Oh, Tonic, sorry. Thing. Tonic, okay. but you want a soft bristle brush. This is a makeup brush. This is on my Amazon shop. This is another option. And these were originally designed as you can tell that the fibers are just very soft. I do like Simon's because it's very wide. So you're going to get a lot more done with one swipe, but you just want to make sure you're not scratching your toner or your um, foil. And you want to make sure that it's dedicated just to foiling. You don't want to use it to clean up glitter one day and then foil the next day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which I did with this brush. So I think I need a new one. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> well, I think that we've gone over pretty much everything we can go over for tonight. Uh, but Simon and I are definitely going to do this again another time. Maybe we'll do some collaborating with maybe some holiday stamps and holiday foiling. For sure, yeah. Later on down the line. But Simon's going to be moving, so you'll have to catch up on some of his other videos. Yes, I think I'll try to create videos when I move, but we'll see. We'll see what I get done. <laughs> We'll see if it's even possible because we're building a new craft room downstairs in the basement and it's unfinished right now. So we're refinishing it and then we're building the craft room there. So it'll take probably a month or two. So we'll see. <laughs> well, you're very lucky. I know you said your dad is very handy and he has helped you with your current room and your light fixtures. And, you know, you have your, your craft area set up very neat and nice and 
your recording area. So we're very excited to see where this takes you in your journey. And if you need anything, we're always here for you. For sure. Well, thank you so much for having me again. This was tons of fun. Make sure we switch back to our face cams. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. All right. We have a special goodbye. Hey, everyone. Um, hey, Leah. <laughs> this has been so much fun, Nancy. I had a ton of fun kind of joining you in foiling. It was it was a last minute thing that I suggested last night and she was up and she responded. Um, and it's so awesome. So I cannot wait for tomorrow when I upload my video too that we created all about foiling and you guys can kind of see all of that. And I cannot wait for new people on my channel to see you as well. Um, Cause I have learned so much from you about foiling, which is so awesome. And tonight was so much fun to, to foil and um, Leah, it was great to meet you as well. Um, and I hope you keep crafting and, and have an awesome time doing that. And it's really inspiring to see, to see you creating. <laughs> well, thank you, Simon, for inviting me and thinking of us and our foiling little group here. And we love having you on our videos and commenting and we love your product. So keep going, thank don't you. stop keep creating wonderful things. We can't wait for you to come out with more ink colors in your collection. Um, so the fact that I bought all of the ink pads and all of the reinkers says a lot because I tell these guys all the time, I never buy reinkers. <laughs> so I've made a commitment to your inks and uh, hopefully you'll come out with some more fun colors. You need some more purples. That's the only thing I'll say. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And you know, that might be coming soon, <laughs> what you just suggested. Great. So um, yeah, I'm so excited. and. Definitely more inks coming soon, more designs, and more fun tools even in the next year, which I'm excited about. Awesome. Well, what do we say when we end the video? Thanks for watching. Keep on stamping. Don't forget the thumbs up and subscribe. All right. And, and keep click on the little foiling. bell icon too for all the notifications. <laughs> yes. And I will link Simon's links down below for you guys. Make sure you check out his YouTube, his Facebook group, and his Instagram page. And all of the products we use will also be linked for you guys. Don't forget to check out the video tomorrow and smash that thumbs up on your way out. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good go night. Like gotta, gotta come on camera. Gotta go like this. <laughs>